Hello my friends, it's Ro. Welcome back to my channel. First of all, happy April Fools. Second of all, we are going to talk about the top five pranks that went way too far, that ended horrifically, and landed some of the people that played the pranks in jail. And if there's enough time, I will tell you guys a story time of one of those pranks that happened to me. And yes, the person should have ended up in jail, could have ended up in jail, did wind up eventually ending up in jail, but not because of what they did to me with this prank. How's that for a teaser and a half? I hope I get to it. If you're new here, my name is Ro. I'm the founder of an organization called Strong Prison Wives and Families, the author of a book called The Comeback Code. I'll pop a link to it up there. We do not glorify or glamorize prison or prison wife life here. Frankly, the whole entire thing sucks, but I will use my many years of experience to help you get through this really painful, hopefully one shot deal. I have so many people who tell me they would not have been able to get through this journey without me. And that is just so amazing and humbling. Okay. Without wasting any more time, let's talk about the top five pranks that just went bad and people landed their butts fired in jail, practically divorced and under the ground. Whoa. I don't understand why people just don't stick to putting toothpaste in Oreos or crazy glue pranks on the toilet seat, something like that, whoopee cushions, the age old pranks that are on the safer side. We have to go this far. But the first prank that went way too far, it was 2014 at Virginia College in Spartanburg. And one of the employees named Angela Timmons had this bright idea that she was gonna call her daughter and tell her that there was a mass thing that causes lockdown at the school. So she texts her daughter and she says, oh my gosh, I heard shots. We're going on lockdown, I'm scared. And so her daughter frantically texts her back and after not getting any responses for a couple of minutes, she does what any of us would do and she calls 911. So the police, SWAT teams, the fire department, ambulances, EMS, everybody surrounds the school. They get on the property and they discover that this whole thing was just a really bad idea for an April Fool's prank that went horribly wrong. Miss Timmons actually was taken right to the county jail. She was facing four charges. I know two of them. One was breach of peace. The other was disturbing a school and I can't remember the other two that they put on there, but that is a really embarrassing and probably expensive April Fool's Day joke that wasn't thought through all the way. Number two, Susan Hudson calls her sister one morning and she said, my husband and I got into the worst fight and it got out of control. I don't know what happened. It escalated and I shot him. And now I'm trying to clean up the blood. I don't know what to do. I'm frantic. You need to come over. You need to help me hide the body. Please don't tell anybody. I gotta go. I gotta go finish cleaning this mess up and figuring out what I'm gonna do. So naturally, her sister does exactly what I would do if it were my sister, and she calls up people in the family, and eventually somebody in the family called the police because she just confessed to a murder of her own husband, so clearly he was part of the family. Police go there, they surround the house. She winds up coming out and telling them, oh my God, it was an April Fool's Day prank. My husband's at work. She calls him up, he comes home. Nobody's really amused. They chose not to arrest her, but they were still pissed off at her and they still gave her an earful and a lecture. Even when the husband came home and was like, I'm, I'm alive, I'm right here, that's me, we're married, here's proof. Nobody thought it was funny. Probably not the best April Fool's Day joke ever. Number three, in 2002, two DJs in Kansas City decided that they were going to prank their audience. And they said that there was an overabundance of this naturally occurring chemical in everybody's drinking water, especially in this one county, to be really careful not to drink the water because of this chemical called dihydrogen monoxide. And they said that the side effects can include increased urination, increased sweating, and in extreme cases, it could also cause suffocation. So of course, naturally, people that are listening to the radio are petrified. They're getting scared, worried, concerned, and 121 of them called the water company to find out what was happening. Two dozen of them called 911. When one of the city officials found out he was researching and making sure it wasn't a terrorist attack, people were going nuts because of this chemical in the water. Winds up 
that nobody did their research. I wouldn't either. I would just listen to the radio DJ and call everybody I know, don't drink the water. The joke was in the details because dihydrogen minoxide is just the chemical name for water. It literally is water. So if you think of the side effects, increased urination, increased sweating, and possible suffocation, that's all literally from water, from drinking water or from drowning. Lots of people have used this prank on April Fool's Day, but this joke did wind up backfiring on those DJs. No criminal charges were pressed, but it's still kind of embarrassing to have to put your tail between your legs and apologize to people the next day because you have to even though I guess it's a good joke when you get that many gullible people to believe you. The fourth one, in 2008, a man who worked for the City Council of London was going on a much needed vacation. It was so stressful at work for the past couple of months and he had a deadline, something was looming, for a couple of days after he got back from vacation. But he knew he had just enough time and he didn't want to disappoint his wife, he wanted to go on the vacation, so he did. Well, his coworkers thought it would be hysterical to conspire against him and they told him the new deadline for this project was pushed up and it was going to be due on April 1st. He didn't pay attention to the date. He just freaked out, canceled his vacation, went back to work early and he started working on this project. He got to the point where he started to have chest pains. He was admitted to the hospital. The stress of this deadline was literally killing him. So he opted to take an early retirement instead of having to continue to face the stress of this project's deadline. Eventually, the coworkers felt really guilty and they confessed that this was just a prank. Look at the deadline date. It's April 1st, ha ha ha, April Fools. And the joke kind of was on them because he wound up suing for $1.5 million winning the case and the city actually created a new law that there were no more corporate pranks allowed because of this case. Whoa. Okay, the next one is just insane. It's a pregnancy prank, which we hear all the time on April Fool's Days. People tell their in-laws and their significant others and everybody on the planet that they're pregnant and they're not. Tori Wheeler told her boyfriend, Derek Bauer, that she was pregnant and he flipped out. He got really upset, he got pissed off. He was accusing her of sleeping with somebody else. So then later on, there's a part two of this prank where Tori then brandishes a knife and then gets on top of him and bites him so hard in the neck a couple of times that he needs 10 stitches on his neck. I guess maybe she was playing up the pregnancy hormones, making her crazy. It was not hormones at all. Yes, there are mug shots to prove this one. She did get arrested. I can't even wrap that joke up into anything other than the girl was just psychotic and it happened on April 1st. Let's just go with that because what? And I hate to add these two in here, but because of what's going on in the world right now, there were two pranks that I heard of last week, not April Fool's, but close enough, so we'll just lump them all in here with the, we'll call it Roro vid. I believe it was in New Jersey, that's so embarrassing. So this man goes into Trader Joe's and he is by the salad bar. I think since, by the way, side note, salad bars and any open things like that where people can touch the utensils and stuff have been closed. But at this point, they were still open. So the man goes to the salad bar and he's coughing. And the employee says, excuse me, sir, you need to move back away from the salad bar because we're doing social distancing right now. And he got really pissed off at her and he walks up to her and he coughs on her and then he says to her, I have the Roro vid. I was diagnosed just right. The security guards trying to get him out, the police had to come and they actually charged him with terroristic threats. So on April Fool's Day, you guys, I hope you're watching this bright and early. No Roro vid jokes, not funny. It really isn't. It's too serious to joke about like that. Yes, haha, we laugh about stuff, but that's just mean. Why are you gonna let somebody think that you're trying to do that to them and their family? No. There was another little boy same day in a Walmart that was licking licking products on shelves and on Instagram or Snapchat or TikTok or whatever the kids call it nowadays. And he said, who's afraid of the ro ro vid now? With, I think, a like sticking your tongue out face. He was also charged with terroristic threats. So no ro ro jokes, okay guys? Ro ro vid jokes, mm -mm, not funny. And we do have time for me to share this one. So the last prank happened to me and it was not on April Fool's Day, but it was an awful prank. And it's gonna be a little story time. So I was in college at the time and the guy I was dating was a pharmaceutical sales rep, street pharmaceuticals. And he knew that I never wanted to try acid. I was really scared of acid. I did not want to hallucinate. I didn't want to see things that weren't there. There were other substances that I 
dabbled with and that's a story for a different time. But this one I was really afraid of and he loved it. He absolutely loved it. So he wanted me, I guess, to enjoy it. I don't know. So we were all out at a friend's 21st birthday party. So I was probably 19, maybe 19, 20 because they were a year or two older than me. And my boyfriend at the time asks me, hey, do you want an Altoid? And I was like, oh yeah, sure. Not thinking, I take an Altoid, I take it. Completely forgetting that they used to drop the acid on Altoids and that's how they would give them out to people in clubs. So I took the Altoid, I'm sucking on it, I'm not thinking about it, it's gone, the whole thing dissolved in my mouth. Within 20 or 30 minutes, I'm in a full blown trip and I hated every second of it. And I was like, what was on that Altoid? And he thought it was the funniest thing in the whole entire world. He was there with this guy that I had never met before. They were all in the military. So he brought one of his Marine buddies with him. And they, I guess he was showing off in front of him and they were laughing. And I was like, I wanna go home. I don't like this. I wanna go home right now. So we all go back to the house. They're doing an after party. They're high on God knows what else. And I remember saying, I, I want this to go away. I don't wanna see stuff that's not there. And the guy, the jerk that he had with him snorted at me like a pig. And his face then turns into a pig. I started hallucinating, so I got really scared. And I walked into our bedroom, because they were in the living room. Our friend whose 21st birthday it was drank too much. He was passed out in my bed. And I just remember sitting with a blanket around me in a laundry basket. <laughs> who knows? And I was like, this is my Linus blanket. And when you do that stuff, you can't sleep. So I was up all night. Eventually my boyfriend and that stupid jerk guy, they pass out somewhere who knows where they were. And my friend whose 21st birthday it was, he woke up, maybe this is four or five in the morning and he comes into the kitchen. I told him what happened and he knew I was really scared and I hated it. So he sat up with me. Oh my God, what a doll. He sat up with me and he was talking me through it. So at one point I was hallucinating. A truck in the driveway. The way the house was set up that you walked into the front of the house, the driveway was directly in front of the kitchen. So the windows were there. There was a kitchen table that I was sitting at and then a counter. So my friend's in the kitchen and he's making himself eggs for breakfast. And I go, oh my God, there's a tow truck outside. And instead of him being like, there's no tow truck, nothing's there. He said, oh really? He said, what color is the tow truck? I said, it's blue. He said, well, what's it doing? And I was like, nothing, it's just there. I don't know, they're not taking anybody's car. Nobody's car is here. So he was talking me through it. And then he says, the next thing he says to me is, all seriously, he goes, huh, how do you get a white out of an egg? And I got scared and I go, oh no, not you too. Because my only person that I trusted in that moment, I felt like was trying to trick me, was turning on me, was trying to make me hallucinate more and I didn't want to hallucinate. And he goes, no, 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 honey, I'm so, so sorry, no, I'm serious. I always hear about egg whites and I've never taken an egg. I'd, how do you get it apart? He was being genuine. I mean, we were 20 years old. None of them have ever separated eggs before in their lives. What 20 year old guy has? Most haven't, but Italian girl over here has been separating eggs since birth practically. So I showed him and we hung out and then finally I went to sleep maybe eight or nine in the morning and I woke up the next day, I got in a huge fight with my boyfriend, all of that stuff. But that was probably the meanest prank that was ever played on me. There's that. So I'd love to know in the comments below your April Fool's pranks, are you into it? Are you doing anything this year? It's kind of like, I feel like the universe is playing a prank on us at this point, ugh. But, let me know what you think in the comments. You guys keep staying strong, keep loving strong, keep supporting one another through this journey because you're one day closer to all being behind you. Lots of love from my heart to all of yours. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next eye. <gasps> what is that? In the next eye? <laughs> oh my God. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Happy April, Fool April Fool's Day. I'm Elmer Fudd, that, that's it, done. Can't, I just tried four times, I'm done. I'll see you beautiful ladies and gentlemen in the next one. Happy April. Come on, girl.